What is it that you do on a daily basis? Oh my gosh, that's a, that's a fun question. Yeah. So basically my job is I return physiology back to where it's supposed to be. So like there's a quote, we talked about this earlier, there's a quote in the book that says, if it's ever helped anybody, it gets to play. So we do Eastern medicine, we'll do muscle kinesiological testing, muscle testing, uh, supplementation, wh whatever it takes. But my goal is what's the body supposed to be doing? Why is it no longer doing that thing? How do we get it back to being where the way it was designed to be? Mm -hmm. We re return it back to that. And then all of a sudden everything goes where it's supposed to go. So that's basically, I always tell people I'm more of a physiologist. My goal is to correct physiological issues. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, everything starts to work again. Yeah. I mean, because, you know, standard medicine in, in the States, especially is, you know, you see the doctor for maybe a few minutes and then they're either prescribing a pill or sending you off to a, a specialist. And then generally I'm overgeneralizing here. I, there's medical doctors that I know that are, you know, very good and, and, um, do all sorts of different things than what I'm going to explain here, but generally they send you off to a specialist or a surgeon and they're like, uh, go to physical therapy or you need to go under a knife. And that's pretty much what it is. And if it's a psychiatrist, they'll tell me your problem for 30 minutes. And then here's some, you know, Zoloft or, you know, some, something else that's going to hopefully make you feel better, but they don't really address anything otherwise. And I, I really like your quote about it. If it has helped people before it can play because that's really true in almost anything, even in, in fitness as well. People will get a different certification and then everything else that they've done in life beforehand with their clients goes out the window. That becomes their Bible, you know, and they get another certification. And then that, the, why can't you take little phrases if we're going with the you know, Bible analogy here? What, why can't you take little excerpts of that that are still working? And it is really interesting that you're able to do that. And um, other um, doctors and, and physicians are taking that route. Yeah, the functional medicine thing is really kind of sprung up. What I think is hilarious is that I talk to my medical buddies and they're like, yeah, we've come up with all this stuff. I'm like, no, no, Western medicine has stolen or has adopted the chiropractic and the natural viewpoint finally because they figured out that what you all are doing doesn't work. Right. Like, it, let me take that back. It works in short increments. Mm -hmm. If you have a massive yeast overgrowth, diflucan and nystatin are drugs and they work great. If, you have, if you're dying of the bubonic plague, Antibiotics would be a phenomenal idea, but in short amounts, then you have to rebuild all the damage that those drugs have caused. So yeah, it's, it's, it is very interesting, like you say, the, the problem that I see with Western medicine is we've gotten away from physiology and we're so far into pharmacology. Mm. So if someone comes in and says, I don't have any energy. Well, here's some, you know, here's some Adderall, here's some methamphetamine, you'll be fine without being like, well, how many calories you're eating a day? What's your macro set? Like, are your adrenals okay? How much B vitamins are you taking in? Like the actual things that make the body run, nobody asks about anymore. Right. And that's the thing that I found so frustrating. And that's, it's funny because I just do that. And then everybody's been coming and being like, this is, you fixed my body and this, and it's so great. Like, how do we do this? And it, it just seems so simple to me. So. Right. You know, sometimes the simplistic answers are the ones that people are searching for, you know, and it's really interesting. You mentioned Adderall. Um, I one time went into a, a doctor and I'm like, oh, I can't pay attention, whatever. And they're prescribed with Adderall. And I looked on it, it says amphetamine salt tablets. <laughs> I was like, oh, holy shit, <laughs> this is crazy. My wife's like, oh, okay. You know, and no wonder why when I, I think when they prescribed, I don't take those anymore by any means. Um, I think they prescribed me, it was something like 50 milligrams twice a day. And I took that. And I was wired. I mean, full on. Oh my God. Like I did an eight ball in Scarface. And I was <laughs> going and going. <laughs> I went back and told the doctor, like, eh, maybe you need to take like, you know, half of it or whatever. I think the, I started, you know, kind of playing with my own. I think I started taking like five milligrams at a time. I'd like break the thing in pieces and then pop it. I'm like, okay, it's gonna be a little like a, almost like a espresso shot. Man. I didn't, I didn't refill that thing. I think maybe one time I got a refill, but I just was just completely shot. And, you know, we didn't do anything. I don't think there was any questions about how are you sleeping? What are you eating? What are you doing? Are you stressed? There was none of that, which seems very simple when you think about it. Well, and that's, <clears throat> excuse me, that's one of those biggest things, you know, people come in and 
this is not a frustrating thing. People come in like, well, I have migraines. Okay, migraines are a lack of oxygen. Mm. Or just like, you know, sometimes seizures will do the same thing. I'm like, have you had a sleep study? And they're like, no. I'm like, are you tired all the time? They're like, oh my gosh, yes. I'm like, well, why have you not done a sleep study? My doctor didn't tell me to. So I have a real fun story about this beautiful 130 pound, just ripped 28 year old girl. She had migraines and she had went to the neurologist and had every single study done. Uh, came to me and I looked at it and I was like, look, the only thing you haven't done is a sleep study because if you're not breathing at night, this is going to cause lots of issues down the road. Yep. And she goes back to her neurologist and he was like, that guy is crazy. He's a quack. Don't listen to him. So she comes back and she's like, I still want to do one. She had some of the worst apnea. She just literally stopped breathing in the middle of the night. We got our CPAP, never had a migraine again. So, you know, you've got that. And then you have people who they're still tracking cholesterol as if cholesterol has anything to do with heart attacks and strokes instead of doing calcium CTs to see how much placking you have in your arteries. So there's still a lot of tests that are cheap, easy, fast that we should be doing, but no one's doing. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of frustrating. Did she go back to the neurologist and say, hey, you know, I did a sleep study and I, I'm not breathing at night? Uh, I made her go back to get off all of her drugs. So I don't know what was said, <clears throat> but... Um, I know that she's no longer on her meds and uh, she has no issues. Yeah, I'll, so, I'll to have been a fly on the wall in that room. Yeah. It's, well, the problem that you get into is that you better be real careful even with those things when you, mm. when you quote unquote fix somebody else's mess ups mm. is because, you know, especially in Texas, these guys have such power. They can come through and say all sorts of terrible things. Sure. And so my, my goal is just be like, look, you know, if I can help out in some way, if, you know, we can do this as a team. Right. Um, and most of the times, and this is actually happening a lot. What happens is I'll get calls from these guys and they're like, Hey, tell me what you did. Tell yeah. me why this worked. And if you approach it in that, like, Hey, let's help each other out. Yeah. A lot of these guys have been really, really cool. And like, so I've get, I get refers from all over the place for people who don't want to have their gallbladder cut out, but they're having gallbladder issues. And so they'll send them to me. And I can actually treat, treat it and fix it. And so instead of getting your gallbladder cut out, we treat the liver, which is actually where the problem is, and everything's fine. Yeah. So yeah, as soon as these docs found out there was another way, they were like, do you want surgery or you want, you want the, the weird you know, nutrition way? And they're like, I don't want surgery. So they, they come here. Well, I mean, so, that, that's comforting to hear. And in and, and fitness, it started to go that route as well. Like if, if I'm training somebody and there's some sort of ailment and I'm very good with corrective exercise, but I'm not a physical therapist, right? So then I will send somebody to a physical therapist um, or, or somebody that does hormones such as yourself. I've got a couple of people in Chicago that, you know, do that. And, and like, if I don't have the answer for you and I can't find it, I'm going to send you to somebody that does. And then I think that what that does is that validates you even more. Some people say like, oh, you know, I think if I, I'm not going to fix them. I can do whatever. I don't have every single answer. But if you're in their corner, you're part of their team. You look at any professional athlete, you know, they've got physical therapists, they've got nutritionists, they've got strength coaches, they've got mobility people, they got yoga, like also everybody, you know, and it'd be, obviously we're not all professional athletes, but why can't we do that with the medical system as well? And just kind of look at every, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure the holistically is the right word, but just over like, how, how can we optimize all of these professionals in our lives that they can work symbiotically? Well, that's, it's funny. Cause that's basically <clears throat> the role that I play is I, I tell people like, look, I'm the quarterback for this. Mm -hmm. Like I know enough about everything that when we get a bad test back, I know who to call. Yeah. So I'll call the cardiologist and be like, hey, man, this calcium CT is X, Y, and Z. Can you take a look at it? And then I'll tell my patient, hey, you need to go see this cardiologist to get this stent put in, or you need to go do this surgery, or you know, wh whatever it is, or this is the new test we need. I'm going to send you it. So there's a lot of that that we're starting to see kind of bubble up around. And I, I always tell people the most reassuring thing you can hear from your doctor is I don't know, mm -hmm. because if they say, look, I'm going to be humble enough to say, I don't know, but I'll find the answer out for you. I'll call somebody else and I'll figure out the answer. And then I'll send you to that guy so he can fix you. That tells me a whole lot more about a person than them trying to either make up an answer or the thing that really pisses me off is when they say that you're just crazy. Right. So I've had so many patients come to see me and they're like, well, I went to the doctor and they told me they couldn't find anything. So they, pres they prescribed me Xanax. And I'm like, so they couldn't figure out what's wrong with you. So instead of them thinking maybe they didn't have the answer, they just decided you were crazy and gave you drugs to battle anxiety. Like that's, I don't, I'm not okay with that answer. Right.
Yeah, that, I mean, that makes a lot of sense. It, it, it's almost, a, have you tried everything else on your own with you know, sleep, nutrition, you know, mindset, yoga, meditation? Have you done all of that? Then maybe, you know, you need to pop a pill.